Loads of new things have just been added to Comfy UI, and first up is a bunch of stuff from here. This gives us the Git's scheduler and a load of new samplers too. Links to the papers are available as well, should you want all the lovely nerdy stuff. And on top of diff sampler, we've got another sampler. Here, CFG++. According to the pictures here, this should help reduce those problematic artifacts, such as extra tails. A massive workflow then, and just for giggles, I'm using PixArt Sigma 1K as the model to test the new stuff on. Up here in the prompt, you can see I've made a bunch of happy aliens, so you can see what all the things do. The first alien, the top left there, is just your typical example using an existing sampler. 20 steps, guidance scale 7, and Euler with SGM uniform. He's sort of a baseline standard image, if you like, which you can use to compare the new samplers against. To the right there, we've got the first of the new samplers, Euler++. Plus Plus. And whilst the image does appear to be identical, that's only because I've set the guidance scale to half that of our baseline image, so 3.5 in this case. If you want to know what happens if you don't do that, let's set it to 7 and find out. Oh dear, as you can see this will give you a sort of burnt looking output which likely isn't what you're going for. But nerdy, I read the paper and it shouldn't work like that, don't worry, we'll cover that in a moment. The next alien, the one down here in the bottom left, looks a little bit different, but that's because it's using the ancestral version of Euler++. Image quality is pretty similar, but you'll likely see more differences if you change the step count. So for example, I'll put this one back to 3.5, there we go, and if I change the steps on that to 50, and if we do 50 on this one down here as well, let's see how that comes out. So there we go. This one is much the same, although the quality has improved. His teeth are now very nice. Whereas this one, it's, well, I mean, the eyes are absolutely massive. It's, it's quite the change, isn't it? IPNDM is next, and this is a strange beast. At 20 steps, he looks like that. However, if we put the steps up to 40, then he looks like that. Okay, that's quite different. All right, but if this is going to be a little bit of a weird one, if I change the guidance scale to like 4.3, oh, hold on a second. Now he seems to look a little bit more like our reference picture. Although we can zoom in, well, let's have a bit more quality on there. As you can see, it's pretty decent. The bottom row of teeth there, quite strange, but a reasonable quality image. But you do have to change both the steps and the guidance scale. Scrolling down a bit, we've now got the next set of images. And here we've got IPNDM underscore V. So slightly different. And here at 20 steps with a guidance scale of 3.5, he does look suspiciously like that alien used to look like. And of course, if we once again change the steps and guidance scale to match, then we get our very similar looking alien. We'll have a a zoom in there, slightly different on the eyes, the quality, you know, fairly, fairly similar. But the other thing you can do with this as well is use a really low guidance scale. So if I drop that down to one and regenerate, then I do get a completely different looking image, but it's still actually not that bad for guidance scale one. The next one here is DEIS, the Diffusion Exponential Integrator Sampler. Seems like an easy win to me because this one is only 20 steps. So if I put this one up to 4.3, then I think you know what's going to happen here. Yes, indeed, it's back once again to our happy alien. Now, the other thing you can do with this one as well is just use 10 steps. So same thing again, there he is, 3.5. 10 steps, let's put him up to 4.3, and it's still a decent quality image, even though it's taking half the time to generate. Did we get even more stuff? Yes, we did, because we got Git as well. What's the deal with Git? Well, basically it does things, well, in 10 steps, much like that other sampler we just had a look at, but you can also go to 20 as well. As you can see from the images here, it does change things quite significantly. So let's zoom in on all of these and see what the differences are. What's this first one here then using a custom sampler? Well, it turns out we've got two 
different versions of the Euler CFG++, a regular and an alternative one. This is for the regular one. And you can see once again, we've got our familiar face. This time, however, his little gnashes are a bit more human-like and he's missing that third row. So we can compare him there to IPNDM at 40. If we zoom in there, you can see the teeth, of course, are a lot better. So this is that version that's meant to reduce those artifacts that you see in your generations. So that one there, sampler custom, sampler Euler CFG++ regular version, whereas this one over here, although it looks the same, Euler++, it's, it's not. That's actually the alternative version, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so let's scroll over to the next one. So this is that same thing again, but now I'm using the Gits scheduler. So you see there, I've just got the basic one, DDIM uniform, 50 steps. So that's another issue with that one is that you have to use a lot more steps. And also with the standard regular version, um, the guidance scale changes. So now it's 0.7, so a lot, lot lower. You wouldn't go up to like 3.5 with that one. That would be very, very burnt, like when we went up to seven with that. So there, the guidance scale changes a lot more. So you probably want about 0.6, 0.7, maybe 0.8. So you just change it very, very small amounts at a time. And uh, hopefully then you shouldn't get all those extra artifacts and it'll look a nice clean image like that. So doing that same thing with Gits, so that's 50 steps, and this one is 10 steps. That's ten, the same as that one, but we've got 10 steps in Gits. And it looks quite cute, doesn't it? It's quite a good quite a good picture. Let's zoom in just so we can have a look at the old quality. Now, obviously it's completely different. Um, it is wrong as well, because I said I wanted the alleyway at night, uh, but given that it's 10 steps, that's not bad. Okay, this next one then, Euler CFG++ again, but this time this is the alternative version with the with the custom sampler there. And I'm using SGM Uniform and 20 steps. So if you remember, that's exactly the same as the one over here. When we did this at 20 steps, let's put him back to 20 steps just so we can see. There he is, so once again, pretty much the same as the original reference image, 3.5. So this version of Euler PP, so you've got Euler PP, and the Euler Ancestral, that's the alternative, not the regular version. Okay, so sticking with that alternative version, but this time once again using Gits, we get a very similar picture to the other Gits version. Although of course this time his smile, I don't think is quite as good because it's, it's turned into his eyes. Let's move him into the middle. So the picture quality is still fairly decent. It's not a bad image, but uh, yeah, compositionally, hmm. Okay, so that's covered the two different versions of Euler CFG++, the alternative and the regular ones, both with and without the Gits scheduler. So let's focus more on the Gits ones. Now we've got those two different versions out of the way. So now we've got IPNDM with Gits. Now this one is a little bit different because when I used 10 steps on this, it looked pants, so it wasn't quite as good. And as we saw earlier, of course, you've got a slightly different guidance scale. So here I'm using CFG 5.8, but nevertheless, 16 steps, image quality, pretty good. I, I actually prefer that to the other ones because it hasn't got that extra line. So it doesn't look like he's wearing a funny helmet. He's got nostrils, little smile, the eyes. Personally, I think that one's pretty good for 16 steps. And then of course, next to it, we've got the IPNDM underscore V. So same thing, but we're using the underscore V version. Whilst that image might have looked similar when we were zoomed out, zooming in here, you can see, hopefully there are some issues with it there. So it's a lot more speckled and not quite as clear as that one. So that's nice, crisp and clean. And this is a little bit blotchy and weird. So Mm, yeah, the next two then, D-E-I-S with Gits. So here it is with 10 steps and 20 steps, just to show you the different quality. So it looks quite good at 10 steps. It is still a decent image there, but I found when I put it up to 20 steps, it looked more like those other aliens. And personally, I think that's the best of the bunch so far. Quick summary then, there are all the different aliens, but who's this guy down here? Well. For this one, I thought, okay, as all those other ones seem to have a slightly different guidance scale, 
what happens if I add even more dynamic thresholding in there and start playing with a guidance scale more, then you get sort of a mix, don't you? So here, at least I've got the alleyway at night. Uh, the composition is sort of more like these other ones, but we've got the colors in from this and a little bit of those. So it's sort of like a mix between gits and the standard way of doing things if you do a bit of guidance rescaling. The other thing you'll see I'm using here is that IPNDM underscore V, which looked a bit pants earlier. So I'm doing this DDIM uniform 20 steps and with you know, the guidance scale up at 11, because this one goes to 11, then it does actually look all right. So you can sort of use that sampler and get some decent quality images. What's going on here? Why am I looking at it again? Well, for this one, I wanted to have a look at it in 2K. So this one, I'm using PixArt Sigma 2K, and these resolutions are, of course, absolutely massive. If we crack open that image, there he is. He's uh, 1792 by 2304. So I was looking to see how do these samplers work if I sort of pump up that resolution. Here's a quick summary of the PixArt 2K results then. These are all meant to be Cthulhu standing over a kitten in an oil painting style. And there we've got the reference. I was using this because obviously Cthulhu has tentacles going everywhere. So this should be all sorts of different artifacts. There then is the summary, just using the standard K sampler. All of those are pretty good. Of course, my favorite is DEIS. There it is with 20 steps and also with 10 steps. We'll open up the 10 step one. So that's pretty good, isn't it? 10 steps, very, very high resolution, quite quick to produce. The Gits summary then, and personally, I didn't think Gits did very well once I started pushing that resolution a bit higher. So let's zoom in here and have a quick look at these again. So this is that regular Euler PP CFG one, uh, DDIM 50. And of course, this looks very nice. This is one of the best samplers. Of course, you have to use the 50 steps, but you do get a very nice output. However, once you start using Gits, um, I think basically my Cthulhu falls apart. Uh, so does the kitten there as well. And uh, that's the, the standard one. We've got another Gits there. And again, no, no good. Same then with the IPNDM and the underscore V version. Both of those, the Cthulhu isn't very good. The tentacles going everywhere. The cat's a bit wonky. So whilst Gits seem to be okay in those lower resolutions, once I start pushing the resolution up a bit, Personally, not so good. How about if I do the classifier free guidance trick as well? Yes, I get the color back, but I've still got lots of those artifacts. So personally, I think Gits works quite nicely in the lower resolutions, but once it gets up to 2K, I don't know, I'll have to do more tests, but it does seem to fall apart a little bit. The other samplers, of course, are absolutely brilliant. That's about it from me for now, but do enjoy all the new stuff you've got in Comfy UI. Patreon members, of course, get the workflows pre-made for them, or you can make them yourself at home too, using the information from this video. That's it from me for now, so hopefully see you on the next one. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.